What's going on guys? I have even more iOS 11 hidden features and changes to share with you in this video. A lot of these are those smaller ones that just take time to find, but some of them are very impressive. And I wanna give a big thank you to the iOS beta subreddits for finding a lot of these, just sharing those with you in this video. But let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so in no particular order, I'm starting with the camera application, a very small one, but helps use the filters feature easier. Just swipe up to access the filters now. And of course you get the new interface. Whereas before you had to actually go and physically press the filters button up in the top. In iOS 11, using the dictation menu, you'll notice it's completely different now. So it's a much cleaner, uh, flatter look. And not only does it look different, it behaves differently as well. It will not disappear as soon as you dismiss it. Now it stays on there unless you want to click the keyboard button and go back to the keyboard. In the notes application, one I didn't share with you in the last video, you guys can now slide to the right to pin individual notes to the very top. Now this feature just continues to get better and better. More people are finding that drag and drop is implemented almost everywhere within iOS. So go ahead and get a word 3D touch on it and you can go ahead and drag it around and include it into other areas of the application. So let's say just going into this new note, I can drag and drop it here just like that. And this works within messages within any stock application. Better than that, though, it works in third party applications as well. So if I jump into Instagram over here, you'll notice that on a third party unsupported app, I can search for really anything. Take this word that I just uh, typed, go over here and bring it to any other area of this app where there's text and drop it. Now in the notes application, when importing photos from the photo library, you can now do multiple photos. So it doesn't have to be just one. Now you can do several, which is cool and no longer a limitation there. Now the new control center on iOS 11, whoa, it's fantastic. I mean, all these new toggles are great, but did you know Apple implemented the ability for third party developers to add even more? So Hamza Sood on Twitter showed us this video, which is his own toggle working on the control center as if it was native, super cool. The Bluetooth input lag on iOS 11 when using dictation with your car is much faster than on iOS 10. Now with Siri in iOS 11, there's a quick little toggle here to toggle between your car or your iPhone as the input. And when you are connected to Siri, it will actually show you where the input is coming from. So in this case, from a car. Check this out. In Safari for iPad, you can actually drag links within Safari into a new window just like that. And this works for pretty much anything, any link, very, very intuitive, and it works without 3D touch. This one's actually very hard to catch unless you're looking carefully, but when you're going up and down in brightness, look at the little sun icon. It's shrinking and growing in size, a very, very subtle little touch. And same thing with the volume indicator. The bars are going down and up as you go up. And one I didn't catch also, if you 3D touch on the brightness, not only do you get a much easier way to do it, which is a bigger interface, you get a night shift button here. So this is where night shift disappeared to if you didn't set up the custom toggle over here. Now memories is a feature that's been improved in iOS 11. And now with this new beta, it will actually show you memories with four legged friends. So that means cats and dogs. A lot of users are reporting there's an individual memory for their pets. Now disconnecting from a Wi-Fi network in iOS 11 will put a little prompt in the top showing you that you've disconnected from a certain network. Now in the notification settings for an individual app, you'll notice that there is no longer three options for none banners or alerts. You no longer get the none option and the two remaining ones have been renamed to temporary and persistent. And a very interesting change from Apple in the notification settings, if you jump into an app that displays notifications on the lock screen, you'll see that Apple refers to the lock screen as cover sheet now. So it's now a cover sheet, which kind of matches, I guess, what it is. Whoa, what in the world? Now, an interesting behavior Apple made to the lock screen, or should I say cover sheet now, you can actually dismiss it with a short hold and press instead of having to press the home button. Now, this behavior is inconsistent. It may actually be a bug because not everyone is reporting they can use it, but it seems to be an easier way to unlock instead of having to click the button every single time. For remote management, there is a new interface. So if you work in a corporation and you have a company handed out to device, this is what the new interface for remote management is going to look like. And some cool things I learned about the screenshot behavior on iOS 11. So first things first, you can actually swipe to dismiss them and save them right away if you don't want that little interface hanging around, which is cool. But you can actually take multiple screenshots and as you can see, they'll stack up just like that. They get their own unique interface. Now click on it and you can actually edit multiple ones at the same time which is actually really cool without needing to do them one by one. A tiny little behavior change in the app store is you no longer need to click twice 
to download an application, let alone a free one. So over here, you just click once and it begins to download automatically. Now, previously in iOS 10, you could search for previously downloaded applications. Now you no longer have that option in iOS 11 in the App Store. On the iPhone 7 Plus for pictures taken with portrait mode, in the editing mode, you are now able to disable the depth. So if you didn't like how it turned out, jagged edges or whatever, you can kill that effect inside of the photo editor. Now, a Reddit user, basalt 95 was able to show us that you can actually drag and drop files using a third-party application, but not actually Apple. So if I hold it to drag, you can actually use it in between applications like the Messages application to send files with third-party apps. Interesting change in iOS 11 is that when in the wiggle mode, you can no longer exit it by actually sliding up on the control center as you could in iOS 10. See how that kills it? Now it no longer does, it's still wiggling in the background, but you can still disable it with a simple swipe down of the notification center. Now, if I do enter wiggle mode on iOS 11 and I leave it, on iOS 10, it would never ever end. It would just keep wiggling until your device timed out, or if it didn't, it would never stop. On iOS 11, it will stop after about 15 seconds by default and go back to normal mode and just like that. So it ended on its own. In iOS 11, it seems like deleting the stock applications actually deletes them instead of putting on a facade that it does. Before in iOS 10, it would still let you download those apps in airplane mode, meaning they never truly left your device. Now, if you try to download them in airplane mode, it will not work. It'll just keep spinning and spinning and fail. So this possibly means iOS 11 apps are permanently deleted. I mean, the stock ones. Now in iOS 11, without locking your device, you guys can quickly go to the cover page and double tap to bring up the Apple Pay settings. And uh, just like that, get your credit card up real quick. Now, because iOS 11 no longer has a home screen page in the app switcher, how do you get back to it quickly? Just tap on the bottom to quickly jump to the home screen where before you couldn't. Now we know that we can actually choose location services to be used in app or force it to use it to any app in iOS 11, but now Apple will actually give you a prompt for certain applications and give you the option to only allow location services while using the app with a system prompt. Now, if any of you guys use the universal clipboard with your Mac computer, you'll notice that whenever you go to paste something, this menu hesitates to come up. That's because it's syncing with your computer. Now, a lot of users are reporting that it will only begin to sync as soon as you click paste, and that's when the loading begins. So that way it doesn't slow down your experience with just regular copying and pasting. A very tiny change to the keyboard and the punctuation and so if we actually go into the secondary menu here and we put down an apostrophe or quotation marks, you'll notice that on iOS 11, they actually match the keyboard. So they're at a slight tilt, whereas on iOS 11, if you'll notice, they are completely straight. So it's hard to distinguish between them. A very tiny one, but if your device begins to overheat on a hot summer day, Apple will not let you 3D touch on the flashlight icon like they would before in the control center on iOS 10. You just won't be able to get to this menu at all. The QR functionality Apple included into the camera can now be accessed via Safari. So if I actually 3D touch on a QR code, notice that it will give me a prompt to do what that QR code says. And this goes deep. Not only can you call, you can send messages like a pre, uh, pre-recorded message using this as well. So I can compose a message in here. You can do certain functions with this, open certain things. It's just really, really deep, this integration with the QR code. It's everywhere. And for devices without 3D Touch, you just long press to get the same menu. And this integration runs even deeper. You can actually send someone a QR code of a personal hotspot going from your device, and when they scan it, they'll instantly connect to it. So send it to them via message, and they can instantly connect. A very neat one that was brought over from Mac OS, if you actually open a link in a new tab in Safari, and once you decide you're done with that tab, slide back and it'll close that tab and go back to your previous page where you were at. Now, Jeff Benjamin shared this one with us. You can actually get up to 500 tabs in Safari now with iOS 11, and once you reach that amount, you can no longer open anymore as the new tab button gets grayed out. On iPad, here's a quick little shortcut for you. So if you want to quickly start multitasking without doing the drag and drop with an external keyboard, click space and the command button at the same time and just go ahead and search for any app that you want. Let's say music, take it, and you can drag and drop it to the multitasking pane in the background here. And when you dismiss this page, as you can see, you're already multitasking, super cool. On iPads, you'll now get a very similar interface to the iPhones when connecting uh, W1 compatible AirPods or any other headphones 
just like this. AirPods will now respect the volume limits you set on them in the music settings. Before, this never worked and Apple just fixed it. Also, in the About page, Apple actually added a cool little feature. So if you have a third-party accessory connected to your device and you go into the About page, you'll see it here and within those settings, you'll be able to find the app for accessories. So the app related to this accessory that's pretty much the shortcut for it. Now this here is the new interface for the Maps application. When you're not using Maps and you're still getting directions in the background, this is what it's gonna look like. Pretty clean, I like the dark interface. In the About settings of your device in iOS 11, if you click on Model Number, it will actually show you your device's model. In Safari settings, there is a new offline mode for automatically saving things offline from the reading mode, which you can enable here. New in iOS 11 reported by a user, a document and data section in storage settings for individual apps. So you can delete individual documents here uh, to clear up space, I'm guessing, kind of interesting. Another user reports that Siri now gives suggestions for things you do all the time regularly. She'll basically tell you to set up a way to make it automatic. If you guys have an Apple Watch, you can now manually delete the activity app with iOS 11, where previously you never had that option. And if you guys have an Apple Watch synced with iOS 11, if you restore from an iCloud backup, iOS will automatically resync the Apple Watch and get it ready. Now, if you guys currently have a two-step verification on your iCloud accounts or Apple ID, Apple will automatically be upgrading it to two-factor authentication that uses location and this code here uh, automatically with an upgrade to iOS 11. Very tiny one, but in the legal settings of iOS 11, the legal notices and other pages are now bolder, making it easier to read for you. All right, guys, there it is. Over 50 more iOS 11 features and changes. This is probably gonna be the last of them for a while. I'm hoping for a beta two here very soon, but stay tuned for that. Peace.